So far, our player can run, jump, and collect things, but it's not very challenging yet. We're going to change that now by adding in some moving enemies that will walk along random platforms and provide an obstacle that the player has to avoid. If our player bumps into one of these enemies, it's game over. Create a new scene, and for the root node, choose the other node option. Similarly to our player, we'll be controlling the movement of the enemy through code, so we'll choose Character Body 2D. Rename the root node to Enemy, and come over to the node panel on the right hand side. Choose Groups, and add this node to the Enemy group. Save the scene as Enemy.tscn in the Scenes folder. Next, we'll do what we've done a few times now, and add our animated Sprite 2D node. Create a new Sprite Frames resource and select it. The first animation we'll create is the Idle animation, so rename the default animation to Idle and click the Add Frames from Sprite Sheet button. We'll choose the Dino Enemy Idle.png file. Change horizontal to 6 and vertical to 1 and add all 6 frames to the animation. Don't forget to change the animation speed to 12 FPS, as we have done before for our other animations. Next, create a walk animation. This time, add the Dino Enemy Walk sprite sheet and add all of the frames as usual. Once again, set the speed to 12 FPS. Finally, create a death animation and choose the Dino Enemy Death Sprite Sheet. For the death animation, make sure to uncheck the loop option as well as change the speed to 12 FPS. With our animations added, be sure to come up to the inspector and change the default animation to idle, and check the playing option. For our enemy, our collision detection needs to be a little more complicated than what we've had to deal with before. Our enemy needs to be able to collide with the environment and our player, but also needs to be able to collide with our player's projectiles. Rather than try and force a single collision shape to check for collision with multiple things and react accordingly, we'll create two collision shapes. One for the enemy to collide with our environment and player, and another specifically designed for detecting hits from the player's projectile. This second one we'll refer to as the enemy's hitbox. First, let's select our enemy's root node, and under the collision section, let's choose the enemy layer, or layer 3, for the layer property. Next, we'll add the collision shape that will be responsible for environment and player collisions. Add a new Collision Shape 2D node to our enemy, and create a new Rectangle Shape resource. For its size, let's go with 160 on the X, and 170 on the Y. We'll also shift its position slightly so that it more accurately fits the body of our enemy. For the transform position, set X to minus 15 and Y to 35. You may be wondering why we're not expanding the collision box to cover the entirety of the enemy. The simple answer to this is that the collision box will determine when the enemy collides with a platform, as well as when it collides with our player, resulting in a game over screen. So we want to be as lenient as possible towards the player. By making this collision box a little smaller, it gives the player a little bit more wiggle room when jumping over the enemy and makes the game feel more fair. Now we have our environment collision shape added, let's add the hitbox. Remember, this will be responsible for detecting hits from our player's projectile, so we want to make it a bit bigger so the player has more opportunity to hit the enemy. First, add a new Area 2D node and call it hitbox. In the inspector, set the collision mask property to player or layer 2 only. Next, add a collision shape 2D as a child of the hitbox. Create a new rectangle shape resource and set the size to 160 on the X and 200 on the Y. Finally, set the transform position to negative 16 on the X and 20 on the Y.
Before we start writing the code to control our enemy, let's quickly create a platform variant that we can spawn which will have one of these enemies on. Like we did before, duplicate the original platform scene and call it platform underscore enemy. Drag in an instance of our enemy scene and change its transform scale to 0.4 for both the X and Y axis. We want the enemy to walk from the far right edge of the platform to the other side, so let's manually position it on the edge of the platform. We'll also need to go back into our game script and add this new platform variant to our platform spawn code. Press play and just confirm that your new enemy platform appears. Don't worry that the player can just walk straight through it for now, we'll fix that shortly. Head back to the enemy scene and right click the root enemy node and attach a script. We'll call it enemy.gd and save it in the scripts folder. Remember to change the template to the node default one. Don't worry if you accidentally chose the character body 2D template, if you did, just delete the code that it adds. The first thing we're going to do here is export a variable to control the enemy's speed. We'll set it to 50 by default. Next, we'll get a reference to our animated sprite. We'll also create an active variable. We'll use this to determine if the enemy should be moving or still colliding with things. Set it to false for now. We only want to activate the enemy when it comes into view of our game screen. Otherwise, it might have walked off the edge before our player ever sees it. As well as the active variable, we'll create a variable to define the strength of gravity. We'll set this to 1600. Just like we did for our player, we want all movement to be handled inside the physics process function. So we'll add that now. Inside, the first thing we'll do is check if the enemy is not active. If so, we'll just return, as the enemy shouldn't move if it isn't active. Next, we'll set the character body 2D's velocity.x to be negative movement speed, which is left on the x-axis. For the y-axis, we'll set it to our gravity variable multiplied by the delta. Finally, we'll call the move and slide function. At this point, if we were to run our game, we would notice that our enemy doesn't actually move. This is because we've never set its active variable to true. Let's add a function called setActive that will take a boolean value. Inside, we'll update the value of our active variable, and if the new value is true, we'll call the play function on our sprite and tell it to play the walk animation. Now we need to call this function somewhere. Earlier I mentioned that we only want to activate our enemy when it starts to get close to being into view of the game's camera. Open the main scene in the 2D viewport and under the static node add an area 2D node and call it play area. This node will serve as a collision area that our enemy will pass through and then activate. For its collision mass property, set it to only collide with the enemy layer, or layer 3. We need to give it a collision shape, so let's add one now. Create the rectangle shape resource, and set the size to something a little bigger than our camera's viewport. Let's go with 1800 for the X, and 1200 for the Y. We're going to write a bit of code to check for collisions with enemies and activate them as they pass through. Right click the play area node and attach a script. Call it playarea.gd and save it in the scripts folder. Inside the ready function, let's connect to both the body entered and body exited signals. Now we'll define those methods. For the onBodyEntered function, 
We'll check if the body is in the enemy group, and if so, we'll call the setActive method we just created in the enemy script. For the onBodyExited function, we'll check if the body is an enemy, and then, if it is, we'll queue it for deletion, since it's left the active play area and we no longer need to keep it around. With that done, press play and wait for an enemy platform to appear. When it does, you should see that the enemy starts walking across the platform as we expect.